you know, what can we do to get through that door? What can we change? What can we do differently is the thought process of going into changing the philosophy. So they understood that. Like I said, Kyle and Demar are very intelligent players. They understand uh, basketball more, you know, more than people probably give them credit, but they're very smart. So they know that what we, even though it was a top 10 offense, wasn't working. It wasn't going to bust through the door. So it was a little bit easier to sell that. And again, to see it work, to see it go through the process was another thing, and, and they did and, and saw the fruits of it. So, uh, and still, I would say we're not a finished progress. There's times and nights where we regress a little bit, like everybody else, but uh, they understood. And, and it wasn't a hard, it wasn't a, I mean, hard, hard sell. I mean, they, they, they uh, you know, they, had, they <clears throat> kind of rolled their eyes a little bit, but they understood. Medium hard sell? A big pardon? Medium hard sell? Uh, medium, very low, medium heart. So, you find, how's that? So you find yourself now really breaking through that ceiling. You know, you talk about that process. You're now in the lead spot and climb as opposed to a chase position. Did you sense the point where the team kind of started to believe? You know, yeah, we could be the number. We'll take that number one spot. Yeah, it, it, there was a point. You know, we talked about it and let it go because we knew what the problem. We don't talk about it every day, but we we hit on it. You know, probably right before All Star break about you know working hard to to get the number one spot, but. Again, my thing is if we do the little things, you know, possession by possession, win every possession, try to at least, then all the other stuff will take care of itself. And, and that's the position we're in now and uh, continue to improve, keep that mindset and not just get fixated on, hey, we got to be number one. No, well, let's, let's continue to improve as a team, as individuals, our coaching staff. We all want to improve and, and always try to think out of the box and think of new ways to be better. And uh, all the other, the, the number one spot will, you know, all the other stuff will take care of itself. With the, uh, the offensive changes you guys made, most of the attention has been paid, still is being paid to the perimeter and all the threes you're taking. But this has been Jonas, one of his best and most efficient seasons, too. I mean, is this what you were envisioning for him with those changes? And how does that play into the big guy? It does, because he's touching the ball far more than he did by calling his number in the post. Uh, you know, he's touching the basketball, he's feeling the basketball, and there's something about that ball when people touch it, it's energy. And, and he's energized on both ends of the floor. He, he's understanding now when to pick his spots to, to, to score in the below post. But I think he's more comfortable now. Where before, uh, before, I thought he was always fighting, you know, when am I going to get my shot, when am I going to get my touch and all that, where now he is touching the ball and the ball is going through him regularly and he's finding his spots to score. So that's helped him not only on the offensive end, but also on the defensive end. What have you seen as the defensive end, like the specific improvements that he's made? Of? Guarding uh, pick and roll situations. Uh, as we talked about, if, if uh, Brooklyn goes small, we can also, he can, you know, he's much better at doing that. Where before last year, I would say he, you know, wasn't as, as ready to do that, and he's improved in that area. He's improved his pick and roll defense. We've been doing some things differently. Defensively, it has helped him. Uh, but again, his overall maturity, and this, this game is an is a old man's league. It's, you know, to win. I mean, you, it, to, you know, and luckily we've done it in the last few years. We've won a few games by developing and winning. And it's hard to do because there's so many mistakes and so many new situations you put young guys in. And I'm sure uh, Coach Atkinson is going through the same thing with young players. Oh, I've never done that before. Whereas a veteran Grizzly player has been in that situation before. He knows how to react. He know how, knows how to read the speed of the play. And that's where Jonas is. And it just takes time. And, you know, unfortunately, you know, we don't have a lot of it. <laughs> Coach, even though you have won a championship it was, it was Dallas, is it the most fun you have had this year as a coach? This is a lot of fun. I mean, this is a fun team to coach, a second unit. You know, it, it's it's fun. It's almost like coaching the college team. And uh, they're a lot of fun. And, and, the, and the older guys, the, the way they're playing and the freedom that they're playing with and the fun they're having competing, uh, you know, the, it, it's fun. And this it's, it's is the most fun I've had since we, we've been in Toronto. And, again, I understand what our mission is and what we want to do and how we're trying to get there. And, and uh, so that's the fun part is seeing a lot of things we've preached and talk about come to fruition and and uh, you know you can look at the players and say I told you so